Hello chess friends and welcome to the start of chess channel and welcome to my basics in chess series. So in this series we follow opening principles, middle game strategies and the end game strategies. So today I wanted to start sort of a mini series in this middle game strategies. Uh, today I'm going to start with this paradoxical things in chess. Today I'll start with this, well, exceptions of rules in chess. So basically we, we all follow these basic principles. Maybe uh, one of these principles can be not to have double pawns, not to play an early stage with the queen, maybe not to stay with the king in the center. But sometimes in chess it's really possible to break this rule. So, but while breaking these rules you have to be familiar with these common positions about this breaking uh, rule. So today we'll start the series with this uh, rook versus two minor pieces middle game so when you want uh, to give up maybe two minor pieces for rook you should follow these four main principles about this except exceptions of these rules so the first idea is to restrict your opponent's uh, minor piece ability to play if you play maybe with a rook against two bishops you have to restrict at least one uh, one uh, activity of, of one uh, particular bishop so it means you can create a blockade against this bishop you can create a, maybe uh, a restriction of this other piece uh, so you should really really try to restrict at least one of this minor piece the other thing is uh, that you have to create of course uh, open files for the rook so there's no way you should give up your two minor pieces uh, against the rook if you don't uh, uh, create open files you have to have open files for the rook so the rook can maybe infiltrate on the second or seventh rank and then you can can play very actively with the rook the third thing uh, well it's really really important thing and it's this creating supported pass pawn situation so the rook is perfectly fine when you have a supported pass pawn so this pass pawn could deflect uh, one minor piece so the minor piece would be occupied in order to pre prevent this pawn from from promotion and then you can play actively with your with your own rook the most important thing is uh, while playing this rook versus two minor pieces middle game is to get the queens off the board because the queen is perfectly fine with this minor pieces the, uh, the queen works very fine with the combined with the knight combined with the bishop so in order to get an uh, advantage in the middle game with this rook against two minor pieces you should really get the queens off the board when the queens are off the board the position is much more simplified and you can maybe create this um, open files position and play very very actively with your own rook. so let's see now uh, well it's really really sort of a, a common mistake that uh, players make uh, they go into this uh, rook versus two minor pieces middle game without following these rules and this is this position i've seen it many many times by beginners here uh, after castling well white right here knight takes on f7 giving up giving up uh, two minor pieces for the rook but that's really not good if we follow here this uh, main rules about this rook versus two minor pieces middle game we haven't created uh, created anything anything uh, that i've explained here we haven't created uh, no, uh, restriction of one minor piece we haven't uh, created pass pawn situations we have still the queens on the board and we don't have open file for the rook so it means this uh, this uh, sacrificing two minor pieces for the rook is really really not good it doesn't bring you anything although the king is endangered here a little bit on this um, square f7 the king still can go here on g8 and go, black has a po uh, better position here in the continuation so let's see now good examples about this uh, rook versus two minor pieces middle game here it's a game played by uh, Lu uh, lubomir uh, kavalak against uh, duncan saddles and um, here we have a position uh, it's still uh, with the, with the rooks on the on the board and here um, uh, Lu uh, duncan saddles played bishop on e4 knight takes on e4 knight takes on e4 but now uh, rook takes on e4 queen takes on e4 and now bishop on uh, d7 was played and you see uh, the position is uh, we have the uh, equal pawns we have six pawns uh, by black and we have also six pawns by white white has two minor pieces for the rook but here at least we can use this open file and of course rook on a8 was played by duncan saddle so you see this rook is very active 
and as said uh, one of the main rules is maybe to trade off the queens of the board and uh, create uh, some weaknesses here on the second rank maybe grab one of these pawns and create a pass pawn situation so here um, h4 was played of course the threat was uh, rook on a1 with uh, some dangerous checks here uh, queen on b7 was played d5 and now comes this restriction as i said we should restrict at least one uh, minor piece and with this move e5 we have now perfect restriction and uh, this bishop is basically out of game it can maybe go to e3 but now uh, black th white right here bishop on h6 uh, to trade off these bishops and go maybe and create some darker weaknesses around uh, black skin but here queen on b2 was placed so now finally we get a pawn if the position changes here maybe we have a, a three on two situation here uh, then we can create maybe a pass pawn situation and with the support of this rook of course a completely winning endgame so h5 here we have rook on um, rook on a1 king on h2 queen on b1 we have uh, bishop on g7 now uh, queen with the check on h1 king on g3 king on g7 and now bishop on uh, h3 trying uh, to get a very compact positions with with this minor pieces but now duncan saddles plays on this idea as i said which uh, in the game uh, in the rook versus two minor pieces game we should really try to, to trade off the queens to get the queens off the board so here um hx was played with the check but now uh, king on f6 we have c4 and now finally we got what we wanted we have now uh the queens of the board now the rook can play very freely now the rook can play very actively we have some open files for the rook so it's it's a it's okay to continue in in this game although white has two minor pieces king on g5 was played now we have the check uh, knight on uh, e4 but now we grab another pawn now we have uh, two pawns and now it's completely winning here for black bishop on d7 was played f5 creating a tempo on the knight knight on f6 we have rook on a7 bishop on b5 now knight uh now g5 was played knight on uh, g8 and now king on g7 we have knight on e7 i'm just gonna move forward a little bit just to show you what are the ideas here as said to create some pass pawns king on h2 now h4 h5 uh, of course uh using this four uh on two situation here and this is now very very dangerous for white because we can really create a pass pawn situation here knight on b8 now uh h4 here knight on a6 now of course g4 knight takes on c7 doesn't matter we lost the pawn but here we have a perfect attack here now rook on uh, a2 king on g1 and now very very nice move uh g3 because uh, after f takes g3 and uh, h takes g3 king on f1 has to be played but now you see we can create another pass pawn here um e4 and in this position uh white resign because in the next move we'll try f4 then f3 and try to checkmate here uh on a1 so you see uh, duncan saddles played on this principles about breaking these rules uh, about these paradoxical things in chess but it was really nothing paradoxical about it because he knew that he has here a favorable uh, middle game and then also favorable end game with his open files taking off the, uh, the the queens of the board and uh, going into a favorable end game. so let's see now another example it was a game played by esteban canal uh, against uh, jose raul capablanca jose raul capablanca really, really one of the best chess players in history and jose raul capablanca will also go into this rook versus two minor pieces uh, middle game here uh, jose raul capablanca played a very very tricky move queen on c6 it's really sort of a provocative move because uh, now uh, capablanca goes uh, uh on the same diagonal like this light square bishop and uh, we could have some problems if the position for this light square bishop opens uh, then we have some discovered attacks on the queen although black has the battery but still there is really, really uh, some dangerous stuff for the queen here on c6 here we have uh, b takes c5 now d takes c5 and now rook on b7 and uh, you see now the white's idea is now to uh, have uh, two minor pieces for the rook so here queen on b7 was played but now uh, e5 and now uh, jose raul capablanca goes with this idea to trade off the queens 
we want to have the queens off the board we have now a supported pass pawn so it means going into an end game is a really, really a good strategical idea here for black here after uh, e takes f6 we have queen on the uh, Queen takes on d3, rook takes on d3, and now rook on b1. You see, we uh, it's not a problem that uh, now uh, white has these two minor pieces for the rook because this ability of this knight is a little bit restricted. As you see, again, we have this restriction at least of one minor piece. So you see, this knight is a little bit out of game. You need many tempos in order to bring this back, uh, bring back the knight into the game. Here in the continuation, bishop on d5 was played. Now we want to get use of this bishop, of course. Rook on b8 was played, king on g2, and now rook on uh, rook on uh, b3 uh, with the idea to trade off these rooks. Rook takes on b3, rook takes, and now knight on, uh, knight on d2. And here, Jose Raul Capablanca finally has his pass pawn here we have the pass pawn uh, on the a file and uh, i'm not going to show you the whole game i just wanted to show you jose raul uh, capablanca's ideas now it's really hard for these minor pieces to battle uh, against this pawn uh, which is supported by this rook and uh, jose raul capablanca won this game very very effectively so as you see jose raul capablanca followed all of these rules uh, he had restricted uh, this knight's ability to play he uh, got rid of this uh, queens of the board he has created open files and he has created also pass pawns in the in the end game so here is a bad example <coughs> of giving up uh, of going to this rook versus two minor pieces end game because you see it's a game here by boris pasky against mikhail tal it was really of clash of titans here I, it was really cool game played by mikhail tal uh, here you see after bishop on e2 uh, d4 was played by Mikhail Tal we have e takes d4 and now Mikhail Tal played rook on f3 bishop takes on f3 but now <coughs> pardon me <coughs> c takes d4 and if you try something like bishop on c6 that's not good because we have here first d takes c3 and this is of course completely completely winning here for black <coughs> so see uh, um, here uh, Boris Pasky castled and uh, now Mikhail Tal simply took d takes c3 and now we have b takes c3 we have bishop takes on c3 but now queen on d6 we have rook takes on a6 and now bishop on c6 we have now bishop on uh, b4 attacking the queen which is the defender of this uh, bishop on c6 we have queen on uh, b8 and now rook on rook on uh, uh, rook on uh, c6 with the defense of this c8 bishop so if you evaluate the position now uh, well you see the rook's activity still has to be proven here because here we have two minor pieces and the now white will have many many troubles because the position for this bishop is opened well white has a pass pawn but here the activity of this bishop is, uh, is really a huge one here after rook from a to c1 here bishop on c5 was played by Mikhail Tal rook on c2 we have queen on a4 queen on b3 now we see queen on uh, f4 um, Boris Pasky doesn't have time here to regroup a little bit to somehow connect this uh, rooks uh, because of course we want to have open files uh, here for this rooks this rook on f1 is a little bit stuck to the defense of this very weak f2 square here queen on g3 was played but now queen on f5 rook from f2 c1 now finally and now uh, bishop on g7 you see now these bishops are aiming really really uh, on the on the king and uh, this is now not a good position to have the rook against two minor pieces because the bishops are really, really too powerful here a rook on uh, queen on f3 was played queen on g5 now we have queen on b3 now rook on uh, rook on uh, c7 g3 was played and now Mikhail Tal plays a very very nice sacrifice we have bishop on f2 king takes on f2 queen on f6 we have uh, queen king on e1 queen on e5 you see now the bishop is very powerful here supporting the queen in the attack king on f1 bishop on a6 we have king on g1 queen on d4 now uh, we have king on uh, g2 now queen on e4 king on g1 
now bishop on b7 and you see this is a too powerful battery well, now we have even checkmate threats on g2 so after a couple of moves the legendary Boris, Boris Pasky resigned here so see this position was not good to go into this uh, rook versus two minor pieces uh, end game or middle game because the activity of um, uh, Mikhail Tal's bishops was was too too much to handle here for Boris Pasky. Uh, let's see now another good example of this rook versus two minor pieces. Here we have a position. It's again a great game played Mikhail Tal against uh, uh, Vladimir Savon, and here Mikhail Tal played a very very nice sacrifice. He played here the move knight takes on b7. First of all, we have gained the pawn here, which is also important after after rook on b7. We have now bishop on a6. Uh, we have now an attack on both of those rooks. So here rook on a equals played, bishop takes on b7, here queen takes on b7. And you see now we have some open files for those rooks. We have some, uh, we have a huge activity. These pieces are a little bit again restricted. So here Mikhail Tal followed all of these rules in the, in the continuation of the game and of course he played first move queen on b3 defending this uh, both of the pawns on b4 and a4 here we have rook on a6 and now b5 creating some again some open files for those rooks c takes b5 rook on c7 we have queen on b6 a takes b5 rook on uh, a5 now rook on c6 queen takes queen takes uh, rook takes on b5 and now Rook on f6, you see we have really, really powerful attack, so that's why here bishop on uh, e8 was played. So you see here uh, Mikhail Tal realized that black has blocked out its uh, own bishop, so again we have this restriction of at least one minor piece, so this bishop is not active in the game, so that's why this was a good choice to give up the rook for two, uh, for two minor pieces for a rook. So uh, here bishop on e8 was played, rook on c8, king on g7, but now uh, rook on f3, rook on b1, king on a, h2 of course, knight on d7, and now rook takes on uh, e8, knight on f6, rook on e7, and uh, in this position uh, black resigned. So you see, this uh, rules this paradoxical rules in chess are really, really uh, something else because if you want to go into a paradoxical middle game like here uh, with this rook against two minor pieces you should really follow this rule so as said again i'm repeating myself restriction of at least one minor piece uh, creating open files for these rooks uh creating supported pass pawns so the pass pawn is really, really dangerous against two minor pieces and also getting the queens off the board so you see in uh, every of these examples we had the queens of the board because the queens the queen combined with uh, with the knight or combined with the bishop is really, really dangerous so that's why you should really get rid of it okay uh, i hope you realize these ideas and i ho hope also that you enjoyed this video meanwhile you can watch my other uh, basics in chess videos with some other opening principles middle game strategies and the end game strategies and you can also watch my chess tactics and chess puzzles videos in which i show you all of the possible tactical motifs in chess game and you can also subscribe to my channel thank you for watching guys and chess is the best of course